Muslim Council of Britain, Zara Mohammed, and Tom Wilson, who is Director of Policy at the Counter Extremism Group, which is a think tank which works with MPs on extremism policy. Thank you both very much for being with us. Uh, Mr. Wilson, why is a new definition needed? Well, I think it's clear that the definition we already have is, is quite broad and it's quite vague and that government needs to be much more clear and specific about what it's talking about when it when it uses a term like extremism so that it can have a coherent policy about who it will consult with, who it will take advice from and ultimately who it will give public money to because as was found in the Shawcross review of the Prevent Counter-Radicalisation Scheme, some public money has actually gone to extremist groups that was intended to counter extremism. Zara Mohammed, do you think a new definition is needed? I think that, of course, we want to tackle extremism and it's critical to do so and nobody's against that. But what we're currently seeing through this proposal is the unfair targeting of Muslim communities and Palestinian groups. Why do you say that? And I would say that because we were reported as one of the groups that may be on that list uh, that Michael Gove was planning to produce. And we've heard from the Archbishop of Canterbury and of York saying that this would be unfairly targeting Muslim groups and very divisive. So do you actually know if the Muslim Council of Britain is, is, is going to be cut off, as it, as it were. If you, are you going to be on this list? So we don't know if we are going to be on this list, but it's been reported. And I think just to help people understand the implications of that, we are the broad-based, diverse Muslim representative body. So by calling me an extremist as a leader of that organization, our organization, you're calling 500 members, the hundreds and thousands of people that we represent, and the broad base of Muslim communities, the mainstream terrorists or extremist supporters or extreme. So it's quite a big allegation and I think what we're finding amongst ourselves and many others that may be on this list is the unfair targeting, that culture wars and that propagation of extreme yet again being used to stifle um, advocacy and to demonise Muslim communities. Mr Wilson, do you, do you accept the, the accusation from the Muslim Council of Britain that it is unfairly targeting Muslim activists? Well, I can't see anything in either the current definition or the wording that's being talked about that would hone in on Muslims specifically. It seems to me that a definition like that would be just as usable against far-right extremists as it would be Islamist extremists. But I think that the general British public looks at what's been going on in recent months since October the 7th, when we saw that was, of course, the massacre by Hamas of Israeli civilians. We saw people celebrating that on streets of London, sometimes unfortunately in sermons, at mosques, and particularly online. And many of that felt short of the legal threshold, which meant the police weren't able to intervene or chose not to. And I think the public expects something to be done. There does need to be a more coherent, more robust policy from the government to deal with things that fall below the criminal threshold. And that starts by the government itself saying, we're not going to engage and we're not going to fund, we're not going to take advice from groups that in any way um, are, are perhaps unequivocal about condemning violent militant groups. That's interesting that you, 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 you bring out those examples because having this new definition does ha ha would have, as far as I can see, zero impact on whether the police arrest people at marches who are, who are uh, chanting offensive slash illegal chants. Exactly, it doesn't. That's what I'm saying is there's clearly a so, gap. So why are you linking the arrested. two then? Because the government needs to have strategies and policies in place for people who haven't crossed a criminal threshold, as the police interpret it, but who can be apprehended and dealt with in other ways for a start by not legitimising them and not funding them, which in some cases has happened. And the public sector needs to be clear about who it engages with, who it works with. The school, for instance, we're making a decision about who to invite to, to I don't know, give a class on, on interfaith matters to students. I think it would be very helpful for them to be clear on how to understand extremism and to make sure that they're not uh, exposing young people, for instance, to individuals that are going to promote the kind of narratives that undermine democracy and, and shared values um, in, a, in a cohesive society. Zara Mohammed, is, is there anything wrong with that? There, there, if there is a list of organisations, individuals, which the government says we don't think should have any involvement in civic life, in public life, and a school might find that list really helpful. So what I would say is, on what basis and on what evidence? And is the government going to be looking at the mirror? We have seen in the last two weeks um, the former Prime Minister 
the former Home Secretary and the former Deputy Chairman of the Conservative Party all been making Islamophobic and what we regard extreme right-wing views. The former Prime Minister um, with a convicted criminal in America, whilst he praises a convicted criminal in the UK, Tommy Robinson, staying quiet. The Home Secretary, former Home Secretary, saying that Islamists are taking over. And Lee Anderson accusing the Mayor of London of being mates with Islamists who are also controlling the city. So does this definition also apply to the extremism that we are seeing in the party? Well, let's, let's look at the reported words that Michael Gove is, is supposed to be launching tomorrow. Extremism is the promotion or advancement of an ideology based on violence, hatred or intolerance. I mean, those examples you've just given, they don't fall into that, do they? I think what we're seeing is that what is the evidence basis that it feels that Muslim communities are being targeted by this definition? Okay. We all accept that extremism should be tackled, but 66% 66 66 of Britons are also against the war in Gaza. Hundreds of thousands of Britons of all faiths, communities and none are marching and protesting. Why are we just singling out the fringes and not talking about the fact that, yes, of course, we all care about it, but what's been reported on that list are Muslim organisations and Palestinian organisations. Um, I want to come back to 2009 in terms of your organisation. I know you've been Secretary General just for a, a few years, but the then Labour government uh, did cut off ties with uh, your organisation because of a former Deputy General Secretary who endorsed terror attacks on vessels enforcing a UN weapons blockade on Gaza. Labour then, it's reported, re-engaged. The Conservatives have never engaged with you, is, is my understanding, since they came to power in 2010. So why would it make a difference if you were on this list? Just explain. I think, you know, first of all, we're talking more than 14 years now of this non-engagement policy. You know, as the first female Secretary General of the organisation, and now in 2024, you know, we ask the question, well, who is the government engaging with and what are they doing? The implications, we do lots of work in terms of bringing communities together, encouraging Muslim participation in public life, interfaith dialogue, you know, encouraging that community building, as we saw with COVID, you know, that public response that we led for community organisations across the UK and building a Britain that's not just tolerant, but inclusive and that works together. By cancelling us out, the implication would be huge, not just for us, but all of our members, the broad mainstream of Muslim communities who would now be labelled as extreme. My background is in international human rights law. The idea that I would be on a list considered extreme is not just you would be labelled an extremist. I would be. Extreme. You would be. I mean, what I just for me was just so upsetting and so distressing to think. You know, often we talk about this politics and headlines and mm. proposals, but that has an implication on everyday people. And when I took on this role and to represent British Muslim communities who want to see a great Britain, not an extreme Britain, not where we're at attack, I did that because I believe that we could do something great and build a society where all of us are included fairly. Mr Wilson, do you accept that the government, Michael Gove, the Community Secretary, is, is going to have to provide evidence if he's going to come up with a list of names of individuals and organisations who he labels extremist? Absolutely. I mean, I would be amazed if the government didn't present a pretty robust case for anyone or any organisation that they put on their list because they know that it's going to be open to legal challenge. So they will, I'm sure, be thinking about this very carefully. But what I would say is that we've reached a point now where I think that if we simply allow things to, to slide as they're going, we have such a divisive atmosphere around many of these demonstrations that are happening. You know, I have Jewish friends who say they won't go into central London when these demonstrations are happening. I've seen small English market towns where people are calling for intifadas. It's absolutely unbelievable. Um, and I think but we, that do we have legislation right. to deal with that? The police have powers to deal with well, that. Well, we don't because the police don't think that calling for intifada or even for calling for jihad on British streets leads to an arrest. So the government is right to say you've got to have a second set of policies that isn't always about the law because you don't want to infringe on free speech and arrest people for saying things. But that does set a clear line about what the British government and hopefully the public sector will and won't stand for and that that can be disseminated throughout civil society. And that that also goes after the far right and that this isn't about targeting any minority and the minorities who feel that there is hate being whipped up by the far right against them can also draw on this definition to call out and challenge and challenge the government to make okay. sure that those groups aren't being engaged with either. Thank you both very much. Thank you, Tom Wilson and Zara Mahal.